that foundation need to be addressed you don't make people do things you think is scriptural i'm not a cia of anybody hallelujah how many of you are a cia here <laughs> i don't want to be cia you are a cia okay better be careful <laughs> <laughs> the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. All right. So I don't care about going around and telling people what to do and monitoring them. That's not what to be. What I want to be as a pastor. Never. I'm not a party to that. Are you with me? I'm not a party to that. But what I am party to is standard foundation foundation must be laid standard must be there and if we are connected together it's because we are connected with the foundation the gospel is the power of god unto service when the spirit of, of god is in control it is automatic for somebody who is genuinely born again to connect it's just going to be automatic he said, my sheep knows me. I know them. They hear my voice. They what? They hear my voice. They hear. They hear my voice. And the voice of stranger, will they not what? Listen yet to. They won't. Hallelujah. So the question is, have I been keen enough to be able to find out the voice of God? Voice of God does not condemn. Back in the power of God. God Lord with you at the end of the world. The Lord does not want our past to be found out. This morning.
Give him praise. 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 Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. All peace from you to you. Thank you, Lord. Bible this morning to the book of First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 to you be the praise God stand here in the honor of you in the presence of your saints your people take this glory take this worship as a sweet smelling suffer to you Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than what which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. I'm also going to read from the book of Psalm 11 verse 3. Psalm 11 verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Today, I am going to be sharing with you understanding my foundation of your seat. Please sit down comfortably. This happened to be the part two of what we did if i'm correct on the 12th of december we are going to embark on the second part of this topic understanding my foundation all right we talked about foundation earlier we said a foundation is a basic or underlying principle that guides an organization is setting a life we said is the lowest load bearing part of a building typically below ground level we said the foundation is hidden it's not immediately obvious so we can't make misconstrue that though is the one that bear the maximum load but it's not conspicuously at the first look uh, very obvious so that means foundation has, is an eating important potence that drive a whole settings of an organization you can liken a foundation to a vision a foundation to a startup and a couple of other things the foundation must not be Satisfied by what gift offers, such as miracles, science, and support of people. That is not what is representative of foundation. Foundation is more than miracles and science, what, uh, what we experience, and support people give to us. So we have to be very mindful that we are meant for the people. Still does not suggest that we have a foundation. That our words are respected everywhere, 
because we are politicians, C does not give us foundation. That we experience miracles, signs and wonder around us, and we are part of it, C does not explain the true foundation. All those things are mere support. In fact, you will be, we, will not, we will be surprised that uh, signs and wonders, miracles are categorized as addition. So seek the kingdom of God first, and every other thing will be added. Hallelujah. The book of Ephesians, we'll talk about uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20 to 20, 22. It says, having been built on the foundation of the apostle and the prophet. So that's a foundation that started the church of God right from the day of Pentecost. And that's the foundation we are kind of reviewing again. I will make mention, number one, say what are the foundations? Number one, we said simplifying the orientation of our heart, leading to defining the sanctity of our spirit with regard to the recognition of our body as the temple of God, where the Holy Ghost dwells in. Right? You are putting a distinction between your spirit, the spirit of God, and making sure you draw a line to be able to know the place of your body. Hallelujah. And I will emphasize thoroughly well about the understanding of where the Holy Ghost resides in a man. When the Holy Ghost baptizes a man, it comes into his spirit. And what makes you to be born again is because you are born of the spirit. And Jesus was telling look, Nicodemus, he said, As if a man be born of water and of what? Of the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, the reason why God is saying that is because the spirit of a man is corrupted from the beginning when the forbidden food was eaten, there was a corruption of the spirit of man. There was also corruption of the temple of man, the entirety of man, the body of man. And that is the provision Christ came to make to put away alienation from God by releasing his spirit to us. He said, if I did not leave you right now to go to the Father, he said, the comforter, the Holy Ghost will not come. So that means that the essence of his coming and going back to the Father was to release the Holy Ghost so that all of us can have a free access to have an intimate relationship with God directly without passing through any priest. This eventually put okay, a question mark on people that put themselves before people as a priest to be able to confess their sin to them and tell the Lord and the people can't freely go by themselves to confess their faults. That put a question mark in that. So, the spirit of a man is capable of being changed. And it can only be changed when the word of God is spoken. When the word of God is spoken, it gives the heart of a man faith. Bible says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what? By the word of God. Okay. He said, if you believe in your heart, all right, and confess with your mouth. So faith comes from the spirit. Are you with me? And that's the purpose of God's word. When word of God is spoken, it releases faith into the spirit of a man. And the heart of a man is prepared ready to go ahead and receive the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost comes in, it becomes an inspiration to the mind of the spirit of the man. Okay? So your mind is not left isolated, alone by himself. You have what we call comforter, teacher, the Holy Ghost, right in there, giving direct instruction to the mind of our spirit. In other words, uh, you know, everyone who have a spirit have a will. Hallelujah. So we as human beings, we have will. And God gave us that will to make a choice to decide what we want to do freely without E interrupting. God is very respectful. This foundation must be understood. God 
is very respectful and it will never force anybody except for his sovereignty. The sovereignty of God can overrule the natural law to bring his divine purpose to pass. Now, here we're not talking about sovereignty. We're talking about the divine intentions of God for Christians and how a Christian can make heaven. So, sovereignty of God only applies when God needs to forcefully intervene. All right? Sovereignty of God applies when Mary alone, without Joseph, was able to get pregnant without having, um, uh, without Joseph going in with her. Are you with me? So God overruled his natural law to make that happen. Are you all with me? Okay, so it is also the sovereignty of God that make Christ resurrect from the dead. Okay? And then the whole thing was teared apart and he came and rose to heaven. So Christ went against the law of gravity. He rose to heaven. He was supposed to fall down when he's rising. But he rose to heaven to go and meet the Father. So sovereignty of God can overrule natural law. That is by the side. We also saw that in the Old Testament too, when the axe fell into water and uh, the man of God uh, was given the anointing to ask the axe to float. And then the principle of flotation was disobeyed. How many of you understand the principle of flotation in physics? All right, all right. So when a particular object is lighter in density, it has a tendency to float over the other substances of uh, um, higher in density. So you have kerosene can float on water, right? So, but the rule of sovereignty of God disobeyed that with the man of God trying to command the axe to float. Hallelujah. So let's put sovereignty of God aside. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm happy to, I'm excited to announce to you that this fellowship is created by sovereignty of God. Because if I look at the OC system, I have no part in this community. I came from a village and God was whispering to me right from my childhood. I am taking you to a place. And that's why I'm telling you today, if you've been hearing voices, do not despise those voices. That might be a voice of your foundation. Are you with me? I was hearing voices even when I was not yet so committed to God. Are you with me? I was not so committed. I was, vo I was born again, but I was voice I was hearing. He said, I'm taking you to a place. I'll do this for you. Do that for you. I will do that for you. But something tells me then to believe. And I believed. And this old thing started up. It came to my family and scattered the old thing and made this old thing to be. And that's why I'm not afraid at all of what happens here. Amen. So when we are giving instruction here, when we are directing people to do what God wants them to do, when we are guiding them, when we are coaching them, we are not afraid at all. Hallelujah. Because we have a foundation. Hallelujah. Okay, if God wants to keep only one person here, I'm good with it. All right. So we have no fear. Amen. Without foundation, there will be fear. Now let's go back here. So when we talk about the Distinguishing between your spirit, the Holy Ghost, and your body is very important that you know that your flesh resides in your brain and he is an argumentator. Bible says, casting down imagination and every argument. Amen. So, argument comes from your flesh. Everything you do, every prayer you pray, every commitment you make, the flesh will come to make noise and say, That's not enough. That's not going to work. That's noise you are going to be hearing all the time. Is this noise going to stop? It will never stop. Amen. But when you understand your foundation, you know how to handle that. Many people don't understand their foundation. They get confused with this. Why have I just prayed and still I'm hearing noises and telling me that it's not going to work out? Hallelujah. That's why you need faith. Everybody say, that's why I need faith. You need faith because there are noises. Faith makes you to ascend beyond noises. Are you with me? So the reason why you need to apply your faith is because there are things that will shout. You're trying to rise down that are also in you. And Paul makes it so clear in the book of Galatians, he said, the flesh and the spirit, these contradict each other. All right? They work in contradiction with each other. They are all in you, the flesh, the spirit. And so that you can't do what you wish to do. So you need faith to operate. And you have to understand this foundation to be able to know how to undo 
all these noises. Hallelujah. And that's how we will talk about last time. I will do it so much. And we will talk about Romans chapter 7, verses 3 to 6, where the Paul was saying that the law that is now obeying is the law of the spirit, not the law of the flesh, because it's been married. It's been taken away. It's been divorced. It, been mar- it was married to the devil before. And as soon as it got born again, it's been remarried to a new husband. Hallelujah. And so, therefore, it's not under the law of the whole one husband. All right? Devil through the flesh. It's now what? It's now a wife to a new husband who is Christ. So, therefore, there can't be cheating. Amen? There can't be cheating in a relationship. And so, therefore, the rules, principle, the foundation of that relationship need to be understood. Hallelujah. So, you will see as a strong, devoted Christian, devil always coming around to challenge your faith. You will see that it's with raw. It doesn't mean that you are not with the Lord. It just means that you need to understand your foundation and know how to resist the devil. If you have to run and flee, you flee. If you have to stand on your feet and bear upon you the breastplate of righteousness and put a shield of faith and the sword of the spirit and resist Satan, you do that. It's very important to understand this so that devil don't make you feel that you are worthless. Even after you spend 10 years in faith, he will say, come and convince you. I say, oh man, my friend, you are just starting. Devil always wants you to feel that you need to start again. Come on. This is what the devil does. And it's a re-condemnation. And the book of Romans chapter 8 says, there's therefore, I know what? No condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. They're not walking after the flesh right now. They are now walking after what? After this. That's the reason why they understand their foundation. They decisively connect with the move of the spirit. And so, there cannot be condemnation unto them. Now, number two, what I'm going to talk about today is foundation demands that you you connecting with God's knowledge of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to explain that. And his proposal for your faith. So what is this? Okay, who we'll explain that? Connecting with God's knowledge of you. Not just you having knowledge of God. But God having knowledge of you. And his proposal. For your faith. Where do I see that from? When we say this, we mean the calling of encounter, testimony, story, covenant, purpose, volume of book written of you. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let's look at this. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Because the word of God is orchestrated in mysteries and it requires the revelation of the Holy Ghost to bring those mysteries out. Amen. You must have been reading this verse, verse before. But I want to tell you there's something hidden in this verse. Book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Say, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Wait a bit. Author. Everybody say author. What who is an author? Somebody who orchestrates, start a thing, right? So for example, referring to academics. Somebody wrote a book, right? Is the author of a book. If you are going to write a project after gra- I mean, during your graduation, you have to submit a thesis, right? A project. And who is the author of that, of that project? It's you, right? Okay. Can you submit a project, just give to your professor, without a proposal? Huh? No. So there comes that as you get born again, you need to seek after your proposal with God. What is the proposal? What ties you to God? That's the question here. How does God know you? You've been talking about God to the Bible. They talk to you. Oh, God is great. Even unbeliever know that God is great. Even devil knows that God is great. Amen. He knows God. (laughs) But the question is, is that not all that call me Lord, Lord, Lord shall enter my kingdom. They shall say in my name they cast out what? Demon, they do signs and wonder. I already tell you before, signs and wonder are not necessarily foundation. And I say, walk of iniquity, depart from me. I know you not. Okay. So, so <laughs> getting more committed in church, T does not show that God knows you. There must be a proposal. Tie you and God together. 
There must be something that God proposes. And everyone that God ever called in the Bible, they have this connection. That was a conversation. That was an intimate touch. That was a volume of book they discover. And this gives them hope to keep driving on. So as a Christian, as you come over here, one major thing you need to concern yourself about, most important, most paramount, what is the encounter you have experienced with God? It's not about pastor preaching. <laughs> it's about you understanding your personal volume of book proposal between you and God. When God called Abraham a given direction, he said, go to a place I will show you. That's a proposal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody got a proposal. Even when Saul was called, God directed them. I will do this. I will do this. I will use you to minister to the Gentile and the Israelites. He said, go to Ananias. Hallelujah. That's a proposal. Even Peter, it was clear. <laughs> he gave a proposal. I said, feed and tend my sheep. <laughs> Everybody got a proposal. Have you been able to find out the connection you have with the Lord and the proposal of your faith? These need to be addressed. It has to be addressed by a personal conversation. Oh, the lady cried. Oh, thank God. He led you to Christ. Okay, you gave your life to that. That's good. But there must be something that will have to keep you going. The volume of book, the proposal of your life. Maybe we've been used to our parents telling us, let's go to church now, let's just go there. And then over years, we've been coming to church, we've been doing choir, we you know, do you know, drama, we do evangelism, we follow them, we don't want to be left out. But the question is, where is my encounter with the Lord? It is the encounter you have with the Lord can make you keep moving, even when the pastor has misleaded. Are you with me? If I tell you people that are bastarded when I was with them, and I'm still in faith today, you won't believe it. Strong in faith. Turn their back against God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn what? Their back against God. Strong people. You will you look at high-level Christian. High status. Spiritually, firm. But turn back. But if I don't have my own personal revelation, volume of book, proposal, encounter with the Lord, I will have follow suit. Amen. Just do the same thing they did. And that's why it comes here in our community. If something suddenly happened right now, what are you going to fall back on? If they say, no more gathering of church. People should not meet anymore. We don't want to see that in America. What, is, what are you going to fall back on? I guarantee you some people will be glad. <laughs> Even from this church, I'm telling you. They will be glad to say, wow, this is good. No more, no, my mommy will no longer bother me to go to the fellowship. My father will no longer bother me. So I'm free now. I'm a freelance, right? And they will do whatever they like. If your heart is going to that direction, then you have not gotten the foundation. That foundation needs to be addressed. You don't make people do things you think is scriptural. I'm not a CIA of anybody. Hallelujah. How many of you are a CIA here? <laughs> I don't want to be CIA. You are a CIA? Okay, better be careful. <laughs> All right. So, I don't care about going around and telling people what to do and monitoring them. That's not what, to be, what I want to be as a pastor. Never. I'm not a party to that. Are you with me? I'm not a party to that. But what I am party to is standard foundation. Foundation must be laid. Standard must be there. And if we are connected together, it's because we are connected with the foundation. I saw your reference point. I compare with my reference point. I think we can flow together. Then as a result, we flow together. And if there's any inkling of you disappointing that, that connection, I will ask you a question. And you can't see me asking you questions as me challenging you or monitoring you. No. Hallelujah. 
It's very important for us to have a personal encounter. Testimony we can share anywhere we go. That the unbeliever can say, wow. Everywhere Apostle Paul goes, he first present his encounter testimonies. And when even the disciples were preaching in the upper room that day, and the people came to join them, the only thing they were saying was retelling the stories of their experiences with Christ. Because their own proposal was the conversation they had, what? They had with Christ before Christ went. They had a personal one-on-one -on -one talk with him. And they followed what he says in total submission. And they were always referring to those statements. That was what brought the intensity of the Holy Ghost into that upper room that day. They were recounting. And the power of God came upon them. Sometimes when you face challenges in life, you need a personal encounter to give you a boisterous faith to fight your challenge. Are you with me? Even if you fall into sin, and they want to come and condemn you. You made a mistake. You need the encounter to say, no! I go nowhere. I love the Lord. This cannot be the end of my life. And you move on. If you don't have that, you are going to simply donate your faith to someone you call a mentor, a daddy in the Lord, and you are just going to give up. Pay the, because of him, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm here. If not for him, I will not be here. So when you have a trouble, then you just back out because you are hanging your faith based on experience, based on people around you. That shouldn't be. Hallelujah. So there must be an encounter, a proposal of your faith. Where did you start? When did you get born again? You must ask some people today, say, when, where exactly did you get born again? What date? At what junction do you get born again? Born again, 22nd of March 2021. On the 2nd of March 2000, year 2000, they didn't even know the year they were born again. These are very important. Okay. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 says, But God's firm foundation stands. Bearing this seal. Guess what? What is the seal? The Lord knows those who are is. Not about you knowing God. Forget about that. Can God call you by your name? That's the question. You have to get to a level where you can hear God call you by your name. It has happened to me several times. Bola, Bola, don't worry. I will take you to where you need to be. I will help you. I've had it. Over and over. You need to connect with that knowledge that God has for you. He said, those who are going to make heaven are the people I know. That's the foundation. And if he knows, and somebody knows you, it means he's giving you a purpose, a reason, a proposal to move on. That's the reason why you are confident to keep serving him. Do not serve God religiously, in religiosity. No. You have to find out what connects you with God. If, if you found what connects you with God, you don't need anybody to connect you. You just need anybody to help support you to grow. You don't need anybody. When you ever see somebody shall say, ah, I couldn't connect with that man of God, you know that they don't have a foundation. That's a sign that I've not been born again. You need to connect with the spiritual flow when the spirit of, of God is in control, it is automatic for somebody who is genuinely born again to connect. It just could be automatic. It said, my sheep knows me. I know them. They hear my voice. They what? They hear my voice. They hear. You know, it's not about connecting with the pastor. It's hearing. It's the Holy Ghost speaking through the pastor. They hear my voice. And the voice of stranger, will they not what listen yet to? They won't. Hallelujah. So the question is, have I been keen enough to be able to find out the voice of God? Have I been able to connect with the Lord speaking to me? 
Okay, this is not about religion, we do worship, all kind of stuff like that. It's very important to understand that we need to have conversation with the Lord. See, hey, if you're praying and your prayer, you can't have a conversation back. Stop praying and wait in that fasting and prayer. Even you can stand and be looking. Lord, please, redefine my purpose. I need to understand better. I'm not getting some things. I know that some things have been spoken in the scripture. Can you reveal things to me? When you begin to see a sign, you read the Bible, God is expounding the scripture to you. You're already getting your foundation. Hallelujah. The voice of God can't be corrupted. But most of the time, we don't want to wait for that voice. We don't want to hold on that foundation that will help us going. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Look at this. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared. Now look at it. Good works that God what? It's not accidental. Prepared beforehand foundation. That we should walk in them. That is a proposal of what, what you need to do on the surface of the earth. That's a proposal. Even going into marriage, you must ask for the vision. <laughs> I'm telling you. The vision of the woman of the man you want to marry to. Because if you marry a visionless man or woman, A, you're going to remain floating for years. Not know where to go. <laughs> no direction. You must have somebody who God knows and he knows God and he has a direction. And that can help your family to what? To withstand stress. To withstand challenges. You must not marry by sentiment. Never. Never. Ever. In your life. You're not mar trying to marry in pity. Let me just help him. Let me just help her. You don't convert so. The Bible says all souls are mine. That's what God says. And the soul that what? That sin shall die. So God is the one that grows souls. Is the one that converts souls. You don't have the audacity to grow soul. Let me convert him so that I can get married to him. It doesn't work. You are going to marry a rebellious criminal in your house in sheep's clothing. And when the time comes, they become oppressor and even stop you from going to the church. You say go to church not regularly right now. You say come here every Sunday. Your church will turn to once a year. May that not be your portion. This is how dangerous it is not to find out who you are. If you don't find out who you are in the Lord, then you don't have any story to tell. Somebody wants to approach a marriage to come and join you. Join you in what? In ignorance. If you cannot simply take to simple instruction, simple leadership instruction, okay, wait, wait, wait a bit, wait a bit. Listen to me carefully. See, nobody becomes great by they ever being great. Okay. God does not bring greatness out of greatness. He makes his own defined greatness a testimony. That means he brings greatness from the rubbles. Are you all with me? Aha. Uh -huh. God starts small. He is an elevator of smallness. It will make something to start like a baby and it will grow it and everybody will see. So by the time the thing is shining, people can refer back to the testimony and say, wow, we knew when this one started. Meaning that the story of your beginning, your foundation is so important, very vital. And the word that came out of the Paul, Apostle Paul to Timothy, he said, let no man despise your what? Your youth. It means this youth you are carrying around, it looks like star right now, at the age of uh, 17 to the age of 30, it looks like star. <laughs> when you start getting older than 30, people are just withdrawing from you. <laughs> I say, 
We expect him. We expect him. That global language. We expect him. We expect him. Now, no, no longer that we are helping him to. We expect him. This is a time of your glory. It's a time of your desperate, deliberate investment. And you cannot despise this. So, in the process of your youthful era, there's a need for you to decide slavery. I'm going to say this. Foundation, very important. This foundation is very important. There's a need for you to decisively, you have to make it decisive to have somebody who mentors your life. You must do it. It's not optional. You, anybody call Christian, there was somebody you fear because of God in him. Who can say, stop, don't do that. There must be somebody if your parents are genuinely born again and they've been in that position, great for you. Hallelujah. But if, are, if your parents are not taking that responsibility, you need to quickly do it now before the devil takes advantage. Devil always takes advantage of lone ranging Christian, lone ranging believer. He said, despise not gathering together that is what the book of Hebrew are spoken by the mouth of Paul by the inspiration of the Lord. The spies not gathering together. It has great recompense of what? Of reward. Foundation. Very important. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to what? Dwell together in unity. It's like a precious ointment. God can look at you because of the anointing of somebody. God can hear you because of somebody cry. It's a virtue of having prayer of the righteous word. Somebody can mold your life. I've told you about vulnerability before, right? Last Friday. Those who are there. You are vulnerable. Forget it. If you want to engage braggadocio and say you have arrived, we will pay for it. For arrogance. We what? And the most interesting part is this. Where you are paying for it, you think it's a fulfillment. <laughs> we think what? You think it's a fulfillment. But it's a fulfillment of disaster. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. You must be deliberate about being subject to leadership, authority, and mentor. You must have an authority figure who can talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Authority figure. See, the way I'm standing here, I have uneducated, you can call him illiterate, but they understand fluency. Fluency of God. Still today. Hello, somebody. Everybody, still today. I've never disconnected with him. Illiterate. He's not educated. Not in college. But a sound about the things of God. When he speaks, Professor will bow because he, cont he has the power of God inside. Whispers to me, help my right there in Nigeria. Helping my mom. My mom is about uh, eighty year old or so, year plus old right now. And he come to there, I pray for them, I communicate me. Sometimes you send money to him. Hallelujah! You need to have somebody who can talk to your ears. You must be under what? Even Jesus made an example. I mean the one. You know, some, that man say, I'm the one that under authority. Okay? Praise the Lord. Even Christ himself say, I'm, I'm what? Under authority of who? Of God. He can't do anything. He only does what he what? He hears. Ha! Everybody say, ha! This is so important. Christ does only what he hears. I don't expect him to be doing that. I don't expect because he's already God. If I'm in that position, I'll be bragging. Eh? I'm God on earth. You can whatever I say, everybody do. <laughs> whatever I just willful. But he said, This is my willfulness. I've surrendered this is my willfulness to who? To God. So who are we? Where do we come from? Where we can submit our will simply to God. You know, Paul said, I have to consider something dongs. Profitable to me, but because of the edification of others, I have to just okay, let go. Just for God to our praise. Hello. 
it is not everything that you have to defend with the law of right. Are you with me? Defending things with the law of right won't get anybody anywhere closer to God. You have to forget your right. What do I say? You have to forget your what? Right. Because our community these days give us rights. Give us good right. If I get closer to you too much right now, you might actually prosecute me for stalking. Am I right? Why well, you brought and it's time I preach, I begin to touch you. See? But why are you always touching me? I think I don't like that. I think you need to be reported to the uh, you know. Hallelujah. Everybody go what? See, only in our America, I've seen all different type of law you could break by just mere talking to somebody. Different type of law that you can break. Just conversation, you're breaking some laws. The law of respect, the law of courtesy, <laughs> the law of uh, blinking your eyes <laughs> too much. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that closer to that, there are so many numerous laws. In the Western world, it's also in Italy too. I was in Italy and Germany. Laws. You cannot just play music, Christian music, anyhow, somebody with you in the room and a partner, maybe some non believer. I bring it to play Christian music. Well, according to the Lord, I'm a freedom of religion. I'm a Buddhist, and all kind of stuff. Many laws. If you want to hide under that, there won't be relationship with the Lord. Foundation will be destroyed. A foundation that needs to be built need to forget about his right what do i say you have to connect with the right of god over your life does god know you you've known god oh we praise god pastor says who says but does god know you that's the question there are certain things that a man can't get until the lord really knows who he is and you, you imagine, imagine God having to test Abraham after many years. Have you ever thought about, thought about that? God wants to know him better, whether he connects with his knowledge of him. Hello, hello, somebody. This is interesting. This is very interesting. Why would God go extra mile to ask this guy to go and kill? You've been working with somebody for so many years, and you gave him promise. You, you, put, you gave him something. Give me a picture of where he's going to be going to. And then again, you came over to him and said, okay, that one that I promised you that you have right now, please can you go and sacrifice it for me? I want to check whether you truly know that I know you. Wow! Truly fear God. Hearsay cannot define our Christian life. It must be individual encounter individual encounter Romans chapter 8 verse 30 Romans 8 verse 30 moreover whom he predestined he predestined you mm. think about that so before you are actually here he already predestined the picture of your life so that picture is what you want to get what do I say must be paramount in your prayers God is not born. Do not reject. Hey, my friend. Hi, 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 hi. Something tells me to say this. Do not reject commitment in God's household. Hmm. What do I say? Do not reject commitment. God, 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 God he, 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 he put a proverb on the table. I think illustration. He said, there was this man, a, a, a prepared dish great banquet and he went out to go and invite people he invited he invited these people great people to come and join and they rejected his invitation <laughs> qualified professional to come and eat they rejected his, his invitation guess what he got angry <laughs> what did he do he invited the unnoticed the mocked to come and sit down and eat wow that indicates replacement. What do I say? God is very eager to replace anybody. 
If I decide today, I say, well, I'm not going to church because I'm not going to preach because all this whole thing, I don't know where it's going. I'm, not, I'm done. Uh, Daniel, George, come and preach. Preach for the next one, one year. Guess what? God is going to empower George, and I will sit down in my room, be looking at them, I'll be getting jealous. <laughs> Inside my room. It will empower them and will replace me conveniently. And I'll be shocked. And it will provide visa for them to stay in America. <laughs> United States. Ah! How did it happen? Then I will run. I will quickly come over again. Hey, it has happened to many Christians and they have shared a testimony and I'm telling you, when God gives you a responsibility, a proposal, you better capture it. Amen? God can give you a proposal just like that to check and do, to do check and balances in your life. Get the proposal. Get excited with it. See, God can look at what he said. He is faithful in my house. He said, you guys, I can reveal to you by dream. But for Moses, is what? There's something that stands him out. He is what? Faithful. Not about miracles and wonder. It's about being what? Faithful in my house. You know some Christians, they are very, they are very christian -y. They are very so... Let me put it this way. They are so christian -y. They are so much into things of God that they have been so much used to it that they refuse to fear God. Have I preached about over familiarity before? Give God a break. They become used to it and they don't fear God. That's not a person you want to get married to. Very bogus Christian. Look Christian. Dress Christian. <laughs> Sharp Christian. Shoe. Cloth. Neat. Heli. Committed. But what? No fear of God. No foundation. They have nothing that ties them to God. Moses, my servant, for he is faithful. You know what? He didn't say, oh, Moses, I've been using him. I've been, you know, using him to heal the sick, to heal the dead. I use him to, to get the people out of the sea and they walk over the sea, all kind of stuff. He didn't, ref he didn't refer to that. He referred to the man's personal life. What do I say? The man's personal encounter with the Lord. Faithful. See, you can shock your pastor or your leader by going extra mile with the Lord. And when God gets passionate and the leader misbehaves, God can replace the leader with you. That's how it works in the kingdom. You don't wait till the rain fall. You watch out for the cloud. When the cloud is gathering, connect with it straight away. Hallelujah. Are you with me? You must, must find yourself. You have the what? Find yourself. What do I say? See, <laughs> it is out of respect that God is saying, do this for me. You know, let's visit, call people, you know, visit them, preach the gospel, you know what I'm saying? You know, all that. And look at the other thing. What is the motive of all this? And we saw that the motive is about just expanding the kingdom. And you are afraid of that. You are ashamed of the gospel. That is the power of God unto salvation. You are ashamed of people who care about you to doing the work of your father. What relationship do you have with the father? Then, who are you? You have no foundation. You are afraid of God's children. Where do you come from? That's the question I need to be asked. Nobody can hurt anybody here. Are you with me? Nobody. Nobody is given permission to hurt anybody. Even me here. I dare not do that. You know, God told Moses, well, you call them stiff-necked. All right. You think that is pleasing to me? God was very upset for Moses calling the people of God stiff-necked. God did not like it. It's so important, my brothers and sisters, for us to have our foundation. Connect with our foundation and it will keep us moving. 
driving us confidently. No matter what happens, we don't care. We, see, when you have the connection, when you know that God knows you, guess what? You can go extra mile. You can go what? Extra mile. Those days, I didn't become a, I wasn't a professor of religion before I started getting committed to God. I was just a young boy, just thirsting after the Lord because of what I'm hearing. And I just kept moving. I said, let us go to Monte for seven days. I'll be there fasting. Seven days. Ah! Seven days. You'll be lying on the floor if you want to die. Ah, ah. Oh my God. Uh, uh. And then you sleep for two hours. And then you just wake up into prayer. <laughs> and then another sleep. You wake up into prayers. I will carry my textbook to Monte as I'm reading. I still became the first student in secondary school. With all those commitments. Hallelujah. When you get busy and you connect with your foundation, God will take care of you. He will. The Lord asked me to tell you that there's something you have been thinking about for a long time. God says he's going to give you a solution. Take a step forward. Connect with your foundation. The foundation of the Lord stands sure that God knows those who are his. Are you of God this morning? That's upon your feet. I want us to pray decisively and say, this is my thing. I do not want to pretend anymore. I just don't like pretending. I'm done. You're going to tell the Lord, don't tell me. Don't pray in the light of me. Don't pray in the perception of the position of a pastor. It is you having conversation with the Lord. Say, Lord, I am just not getting the reason why I can't be so confident about this you anywhere. I'm not getting why I can still negotiate you with something else and commitment to you with something else. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not understanding how I cannot manage my Christian living with my real life living. You sent me to this world for a purpose. You need to help me. Are you with me? Say sincerely, don't pray prayer of religion. Please do not, do not do that. I just want to really get it. I want to be assured that you know me. I want to be. Whatever you can do. Science to show me. I want to be assured. I just don't want to be doing things. Doing things. And then I went there. I do all that. I beg forgiveness of sin. And then I come back again. I make my decisions. And receive people. No. Lord help me. I'm your daughter. I am your son. Please help my ignorance. Help my lack of knowledge. I just want to be familiar with you. I want to know you. I want you to know me. I want to connect with your knowledge of me. Open your mouth and say that with all your heart. I just want to have that connection with the knowledge of you about me. Am I known by you? The question is, am I known by you? If I'm known by you, why is it easy for me to despise your work? Why is it easy for me to despise the church? Why is it easy for me to despise your people? Why is it easy for me that I cannot be sacrificing? Even including what is beneficial to me, why can I not lay my life on the line for you? Why can't I die daily? Why can't I be able to offer to kill my flesh to be alive into righteousness and dead to the flesh? Why do I still cherish my body more than you? I just want to know. Please give me the unction to understand your perspective about me. I need the unction. I need you to talk to me. Talk to me. Talk, say that. Talk to me as a father. Say that loud in your voice. I see God's presence here. 
loud your voice talk to my ears i need to hear you you are my father i am not a slave enough is enough i need to hear you what is your interest about my life keep me focused let me know what i'm dying for let me know what i am dying for i'm done with assumption assuming that god knows me no i need to know that you know me he said i know my sheep and my sheep knows me i know my sheep and my sheep knows me and they cannot listen to the voice of stranger why am i still listening to the voice of strangers the voice of the flesh telling me against god's things and i'm getting excited with it telling me against what is right in god's household and i'm still against it i am done with this noise in my ears what category do you place me what category what category what ha ah shotopita kasadaya what category do you place me i need to know this fun foundation for me not to be shaken by devil for me not to be shaken by embarrassing unbeliever the mockers those ones who hate god so that their word will not penetrate me so that they can't confuse me so that disaster whatever it is around won't confuse me as your son paul said nothing shall separate us of the love of christ because there is a foundation nothing he said is it death is it life is it woman is it man is it father is it mother is it suffering is when are we be when are we able to be able to be able to be able to be confident to say these things that nothing shall separate us from the love we have in the lord when are we able to confidently say this lord we have foundation that you need to connect us with connect your people with the foundation oh jesus open your heaven this morning and pick up your children i command you to pick up these ones right now speak to the Was now pick up disciples here, pick up people here, pick up people here, pick ah, pick up them, pick them up, pick them up, pick them up, pick them up, and show them revelation. Show them what you show me, show them what you show me. Rasha Tatabaka. We need desperate believer in this age, desperate for God, desperate. Show them what you show me. Show them. Show them. Show them. Show them. Show ah, vassal. Let the vassal from heaven come down. Show them. Oh, Sharamakandabaga. The love of wonder. Whose eyes is fully with anointing. Whose eyes is like, like sun. Whose beauty is like star. Whose shadow is like moon? Show them, show them, show them. Break the barrier. Open their hearts and reveal the purpose of their faith. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Is there anyone this morning you simply want to rededicate your life to Christ? You simply want to rededicate your life to Christ. You are tired of all this. You simply want to step in 
and say today is the last day that we ever second guess God I want to dedicate my life I want to stand for him just as Elijah did he said there's no prophet in the land he stood alone with God who is that here raise up your hand and I will pray with you and everybody hope, close your eyes please do not open your eyes let's respect people you want to really dedicate your life you know that you know that you know even when you pray it appears as if God is saying what is he saying he doesn't even know me I don't even know this guy you don't have that confidence the confidence is not sure you can feel it there's no conversation going on raise up your hand i'm going to pray with you and god will break the barrier right now by the power of the anointing place upon me i command the power of the holy ghost to break every siege covering this ones who raise up their hands i ask the anointing of the holy ghost to break a closed door and allow these people to connect with the lord to connect with their founder to connect with the revelation of the lord thank you in jesus name we have declared put your hand together for the lord for the lord is good hallelujah have your seat The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The of God does not condemn. Back in the power of God. God loves with you. The end of the world. The Lord talks about our past.